Okay, we have a very disappointed football team. I know the fans are disappointed also. Uh, I feel a great responsibility to, uh, you know, win games for the uh, sincere responsibility to win games for the players, for the uh, university, and for the people of Hawaii. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I know there's a lot of people that, that are very disappointed. Uh, I do want to say, however, that we have 11 games left. And uh, we didn't play very well. And uh, I'll get into that later on in questions or however you want to do it. But, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going to regroup. And, you know, we're, we're going to be a good football team. We have some things that are... Most of the things are correctable, and we can get things corrected, and then, uh, you know, some things we just have to get better at. So that's where we're at right now. Coach, uh, I'm assuming the coaches watched the game film yesterday right. and went through everything. Right. Have you been able to figure out what exactly happened? Yeah, I know exactly what happened. Uh, what happened is that is that uh, uh, we were ready to play the game. Uh, you know, we were in, uh, we had good practices. We had, uh, the kids were disciplined. Uh, you know, we were there too long, I think. I don't, I don't want to do that again. Uh, we tried to, you know, a long time ago get a plane so we could come back. I remember, you know, you guys wrote about it and talked about it, but there weren't any planes. So, uh, uh, I, I, number one, I'm, I've never made excuses, and I'm not going to make excuses. But uh, uh, I thought we were ready to play. Okay, and why I think that is because because we uh, came out and held them three and out, punted the ball, and uh, basically it hit our guy, uh, it, it was a short punt, we went after the punt, the guy dropped the ball, uh, it was a short punt, uh, and then the defense came in and held them to a field goal. So, you know, that shows me they're ready to play. Uh, this was a game that, uh, uh, you know, basically, uh, we self-inflicted injuries to ourselves. In as much as uh, it's 17-7 in the in the uh, first half, I I wasn't worried then. I knew we'd come and we were going to get the ball. And so at halftime, uh, we come out. I'm expecting 17-14. We're back in the game. Here we go. And you know we fumbled the the kickoff. Uh, same type of thing in the third quarter. Uh, we had them. Uh, third down uh, three different times and long uh, put it had gotten them into third downs and uh, we got three pass interference calls uh, you know some of them were good some of them weren't but the point is we had three interference calls which moved them down the field on third down uh, another example uh, uh, well, anyway, basically that gives you some examples. Uh, I felt, I felt that, uh, you know, that that we had, like I said, we were ready to play. And then the more we turned the ball over four times, you can't win a ball game when you turn it over four times. And then the penalties that we got. I thought we turned Las Vegas' momentum around. At the during the game, they got excited, and uh, you know they they'd been they they have a good coaching staff. I, actually, I give all the credit to, and already have to Bobby Houck and his his staff uh, and his players. Uh, they they did a good job. They beat us in all three phases of the game. Uh, and deserve to win. So, you know, like I said, all I can 
you know, I mean, uh, we, we have things that we have to fix up. We've got to fix up our perimeter. Uh, we had position on guys uh, to defend, and they made the plays. We didn't make the plays. We've got to make plays. Uh, we've got to protect the quarterback. Uh, you know, of all the things, uh, I think we just have to get better there because we're really beat up at off offensive line. We have an injury problem. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got to deal with that, which we will. But, uh, you know, now is when we need everybody to help us. You know, I mean, I, you know, people that can either jump off boat because uh, really we were two and we were one and two last year, and uh, you know, people people thought that uh, we were going to be fifth to eighth. And uh, I really believe in these players, and I believe in these coaches, and uh, other people and their opinions. Uh, hold no power over the destiny of what we're going to do and we're going to we're going to get it done and i promise people out there that we're going to get it done and uh it's going to take a lot of hard work uh we've we've got a few injury problems but you just move on to the next guy and this is football and uh that's what we're going to do you know um, with the breakout from was that a continuity problem because of injuries or is it, were there some physical or technical problems that led to some uh, breakdowns in the potential speaking of? Well, I think both. You know, I, I think, you know, we're down to, uh, you know, we have, we lost uh, two starters that we've started with on the right, on our right side. And so we're playing with, you know, two backups and uh, uh, I think there are some technical problems, but, uh, you know, we also have a left tackle that's really sucking it up, Clayton Laurel, who's playing uh, hurt. Uh, and then, you know, we lost uh, Sela. So we're, we're a beat-up offensive line, and uh, uh, it's not like we have a multitude of offensive linemen uh, David Lafutu is uh, going to get some shots, but see, he's been injured, and uh, I don't, I don't think Chauncey's going to be back for this ball game. Right, right. No. What's the prognosis on City? Is he out for sure? No, I don't think he's, I don't think he's out. Uh, we just met with the trainer, uh, but you know, he's not, he's going to have to miss a couple of practices. But uh, he's a tough guy, and will probably be okay. So if Lafoto gets some shots, to be a right guard, and would that allow you to do some stuff with Andrew, or, or are you looking at Lafoto playing somewhere else? No, he's a guard. He's a guard. You know, we're looking at uh, Cha Chauncey can play all positions. So when he gets well, he could possibly play a tackle. Are you getting any of the other guys back, like Devita or um, um, Brendan Daly? Or? Uh, not really. I mean, they're, uh, uh, you know, Maya's the one I'm concerned about, and uh, his his foot was swollen when he got back. I don't think we're going to have him this week. They're going to x-ray him again today. Uh, so, um, you know. It, it, it's safe. After those two road games, Washington and Las Vegas, it, it's safe to assume that some of the frustration is, in their locker rooms because this team knows that they're better than that? Well, you know, Washington's not a bad ball team. And I, I don't, I don't, uh, if people want to go back to Washington, then let them go there. But uh, uh, we just ran out of time against Washington. We had to make some adjustments. And if anybody wants the TV game, so did Nebraska. I uh, have to make some adjustments to, the, to what they were doing. Uh, it was 17-17. And they scored 38 points against Nebraska. And the, the thing is, is we were, we were one touchdown down and had our ways. This game, we just got beat. Now, that, that concerns me. Washington doesn't concern me. shouldn't concern anybody. You know, it could, what it should say is that our guys fought their tails off. And, uh, 
uh, this game, uh, I really believe that uh, the mistakes that we made were self-inflicted. Uh, you know, in as much as the penalties, in as much as the fumbles, uh, they were at key times. And it, and it was enough to psych up the other team who was waiting to be psyched up. And we played, played right into it. And we talked about that all week. I actually showed them the front page of the paper. Uh, you know, 59-7, worst, second, fourth worst game in school's history. Well, those, those kids hear all that. Uh, just like our kids hear all week how they're going to kick their tail and how your 20-point favorites and all that type of thing. They're just kids. Coaches don't think that way because I know how, you know, that's how I think games like that go. That's what scares me. Uh, so uh, they worked hard. Uh, they did what we asked them. We've, we've just got to get better. And, and we're going to regroup. Like I said, I believe in my players. I believe in my coaches. And, uh, you know, we're going to regroup and we're, we're going to play warrior football. Uh, we didn't really play warrior football this weekend. Coach, how important is it to get the offense clicking earlier in the game, i.e. getting a fast start out of your offense? Well, I mean, it's always important. And, uh, uh, you know, the last two games, we haven't really done that, but it, it, it was more against – Washington that they weren't on the field and uh, like I said if if you analyze the first quarters in this game they weren't on the field a lot because if you take a number you know one other thing there is or will never be this year a quarterback controversy on this football team we, we put uh, David in at the end thought he did a good job a lot of several guys did a good job uh, you know, obviously, it's 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 been noted. Uh, Aaron Brown, uh, Justin Clapp, uh, Billy uh, Stutzman, uh, our two defensive tackles. But you know, there are, there are things that uh, that we've got to get improved. You mentioned you got beaten all three phases. Um, after what we saw out of the defense in Week One against Colorado, are you surprised? Is there a level of disappointment in, in perhaps how the defense has played the last couple of weeks? Granted, they've been put in tough positions with turnovers and whatnot, but you said getting beat in three phases. Is that a phase that you were kind of counting on not being beaten in, at least this past Yeah, time? you know, right now, uh, they can't run against us up inside, but they, they are running, and we're not containing the quarterback on bootlegs. Uh, we're defending guys. The coverage is outstanding. But now when the ball is thrown, we've got to make the play. I don't care if he's a 6-4 leaper. We've got to make the play. And, uh, you know, and, and we'll do that. We're going to work really hard on that this week. Uh, but uh, that's what we weren't doing. They, we had them covered. They're in the right position. They've just got to make the play. And how... How I handle this is I look at myself first. You know, when we have bad play or somebody has a bad play, I look at myself first, uh, and then I talk to the coordinator, coordinator, and uh, make sure he's teaching it the same way that I want it taught. Then go to the position coach and make sure it's being done correctly, and then go to then go to the player. And then we talk to the player, uh, evaluation-wise. And if the player doesn't improve, then we get another player. What's Haku's status? Haku has a sprained ankle. He probably won't play this weekend. So, in saying that, are you expected to make personal changes in, in this evaluation? Well, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we want, like, special teams. We want our best players on the field. We left 65 guys back here. So there's no reason to practice if you don't have a chance to compete. And competition it makes us a lot better. And like I said, you know, I wish everybody would understand this is our third ball game out there. 
you know, th this is early season. We have 11 more games to play. And, uh, you know, I would hate to see people give up on us. Now is when we really need the, the true fans to, to help us and support us. Uh, and, and, you know, all we can do is roll up our sleeves and work hard. And, like I said, win-loss-wise, we're in the same position we were last year. Uh, so. I, know, I know it's tough to talk about some good out of that game, but there's not enough good things that you could possibly say about Justin Clapp. Yeah, Justin Clapp uh, did an outstanding job. Uh, we, the, the two things he really does well is he catches the football, and the other thing is he knows offense as well as anybody. So he's going to be open. He made a great touchdown, two great touchdown catches. And, uh, you know, he did an outstanding job. I'm really proud of him. You mentioned you're not going to do – you're thinking of doing something differently if you have the back-to-back -back road game scenario again that you would probably would want to come back. And well, yeah, yeah Jim, Jim and I talked a long time ago. We were trying to get – you guys all wrote about it uh, – we wanted to fly back home, and uh, you know, I guess there was some problem with the plane situation or something. But uh, yeah, we we had tried to do that, and it just didn't work out. But that's not an excuse, you know. That's not an excuse, but uh, you know, we have to come up with another plan. Regardless if you come home or not, you are trying to avoid back-to-back non-conference road games. That'd be my that'd be my first choice. Would you be more involved in scheduling? Because it seems you've had them four years in a row, and it's yeah, it's quite a challenge for you guys. I haven't, you know, I didn't have anything to do with scheduling any of those. I don't think Jim had anything to do with some of the No, I don't. I don't think Jim has either. I think they were done before we got here, but. Uh, you know, it's it's not scheduling for success. I'll promise you that. You, know, you take a look at Michigan and Michigan State and some of those teams, and uh, Texas Tech. Uh, you know, but the point is, there are no excuses. Just like there's no crying in baseball, there are no excuses in football. So I'm not making an excuse. Matter of fact, I've always made a positive out of it that it's hey, it's great. We get to know the people on the way over on our plane and and then uh, because I'll tell you one thing I, I defy any team to go over there three years in a row and uh, have a camp in the middle of Vegas and not have any problems I mean we've got great kids uh, they worked on their academics uh, you know there were no problems uh, they did what we asked them to do and, uh, you know, like I said, we uh, played good at time. We played good in spurts on defense. Uh, we did some good things in spurts. Uh, offensively, uh, we've, we've got to get our protection together. And uh, special teams-wise, we fumbled the ball twice. And, and you, you, can't, you can't do that. What's the problem with the snaps? Is it... Is it being moisture. Is it something in the altitude or is it no, no. It's just it just needs to be better done. Coach, you're around the game a long time, or when you're around the game long enough, you're going to run into these games eventually. And obviously, like you said, the coaches yourself, you've, been, you've seen this before. But the young men on your team, I mean, they haven't run into a situation like this before. So yeah. how important is it moving forward to impress upon them? that it's the response that matters most. And not well, uh, it's really important because we, we talked uh, this morning uh, about adversity. And this is part of what you teach as a football coach is adversity. And, uh, you know, it seems like every year around here we have some adversity to deal with. And th this is the extreme adversity right now. I have never been in this situation before where a team... Uh, that situation. I, I've been in losses, and I've been in, uh, you know, I mean, worse losses than that. SC 99 or when, whenever it was. Uh, but I've never uh, been in this situation. But it's the same situation. It's adversity. 
And with adversity, everybody in life has adversity. So it's a way, it, it might be a, what you call a teaching moment, but we talked about that. And we talked about getting close and getting closer and keeping it in the room because outside there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, spears being thrown. I mean, you know, they understand that. The last two teams we played had the same situation. You know, people, people are disappointed, so they're going to take their frustrations out, and, and that's fine. But I have some young kids that I'm dealing with, so we're learning adversity right now. I've been in adversity all my life. And you know what? Everybody in this world has dealt with adversity. A lot tougher adversity than this. I mean, people are going through really hard times. But in this, your question, this situation, uh, they're going to learn how to deal with adversity. Ohana, come close together. Don't listen to other people. Uh, just listen in this room. Believe. All those things that make a team. You know, this... This, it, it seems crazy, this may make us a better football team uh, than if it didn't happen. That if we just waltzed through and beat, beat them like all the people thought we were going to, uh, we might not have been a better team in the long run. Would you, Who knows? Would you rate this as your most disappointing loss since you've been head coach here? Oh, absolutely. This, this is my most disappointing loss, yeah. After the game, you said your locker room was fragile um, mentally. Um, do you care to like, expand on that and how, how they seem to be this morning compared to after the game? Well, that's one thing. Young, young guys uh, recover fast. They're not doing a lot of talking or a lot of laughing or that type of thing. But right after that game, uh, during the game, a guy fumbles the ball and you know, they can go in the tank real quick. And, uh, you know, in, in general, uh, they were very fragile. Uh, uh, you know, have you ever been in a ball game? Well, then you know what I'm talking about, right? You know, there there are guys that were crying. There were guys that were really down because they all believed that they could win that ball game. And they felt that they didn't get the job done. And that's, that's uh, you know, that's not, uh, I'm responsible for all of that. So, and I, I let the press talk to people after the game, right? And I see that's even got, I see uh, even stuck up on Mo too. So, with me. yeah, okay. He's got the chair, so it's yeah. Good all right. I'm just letting you know that, that uh, I even forgave you for that one. So. <laughs> you know anything about Davis yet? Yeah, I know that uh, Cal Davis uh, beat San Diego bad, like 30, 30 to 3. I know that uh, they play really good offense. They're a, they're a, a spread 50-50 uh, type of offense sim sim with a lot of shifts. Similar to Boise State, uh, they're they're decent on defense. Uh, uh, I, I just know what they did this last week, uh, and we've we've got video on them. We've already started watching. Uh, 